Okay, so I took a day and I thought about it and I decided that the snaps would be best for me. So on this side, I've installed a set of snaps in either corner and I'm going to show you how to do that on the other side. The easiest way is to um, lay the flaps flat on your surface and position that top decorative piece where you would like it and then go ahead and install the fitting that goes on top of that which is the piece with the little hole in it and I just poke out those prongs and then hammer that in then insert the little nubby piece in that and then you'll want to, I'll do this backwards so you can see, you'll want to go ahead and close that flap like it will be when it is snapped and take the other set of prongs and poke a little hole in the fabric in about the same place that you think you're going to install that from the underside. So this way, see how I'm poking that in there? This way, you can reach in between the layers with those prongs up and poke those through the fabric like that. Then you're gonna have to hold that with your hand and now I've got that how it should be and I wanna get that on a hard surface and then whack it with the hammer. So you remember I use a cutting board to install my snaps. So I'm going to put this all on my lap and I'm just holding all of that together. Then I'll go ahead and install the snap. And that worked good. Okay, so you just repeat the process for the other side of the flap. Now I have my snaps installed on both flaps and I'm going to go ahead and unsnap those. If you took out any of your pins to install the snaps, make sure you put those back in. It's going to be important that you use a lot of pins while you're sewing this all together because that is a lot of fabric we're going to be moving through the machine. Undo the side snaps if you have those snap and undo the flap snaps and now before we attach everything you just want to go around this and make sure that you have enough pins that all your layers are nice and even so first check your flaps and mine are the same height and I can feel with my fingers that these interior layers are even. And then um, visually I can see that the exterior layers are even. And I'm going to put a couple extra pins in there. You really can't have too many pins when you're finishing this up. Okay, now. The straps are attached. Everything looks fabulous. Now we're ready to sew this. Um, just so these flaps don't get tangled, I'm gonna put pin them together upright so that I know where they are, just like that. And then I wanna go ahead and remove this arm of the machine. The first portion that we're gonna sew together is the center part with the flaps. So you're going to sew from finger to finger straight across there. Going to be using about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You could be a little more generous if you're more comfortable with that. And just stitch as far as you can reach from this side to this side 
across this center panel. Make sure you use a back stitch at the beginning and the end. been secured. Now we're just going to work on the one side at a time and we're going to pick up where that center seam left off. So right about at the center between these snaps and we're going to move all the way around that right hand exterior seam. Okay. So I have the fabric folded to the left and I'm going to pick up right at that center panel and go all the way around. When I get to the handles, I'm going to reinforce with a back stitch. And I will be reinforcing with the back stitch at the beginning and the end as well. stitched the whole front of the bag from that center divider all the way around the front and I've reinforced at my handles and now it's time to push everything over to the left and start at the center and stitch on the back of the bag. Just have a look around and see if there's anywhere that you need to go back in and um, kind of butt up those seams. This looks really good. I am super thrilled with it. I'm just going to take a few seconds and trim up all the threads and then I'll give you a tour. Okay, here she is. I think that I'm going to call this one a commuter tote. I absolutely love how it turned out. That's how it sits on the body. I think it'd be a great travel bag. Like I said, I'm going to use mine to hold um, everything that I need for work to get back and forth between home and the studio here. So the features on this bag has double handles with a nice short drop so that kind of gives it that slouchy satchel look. Very cool. It has a super padded base. I put that one inch foam in there so that's going to absorb the shock for your equipment or your laptop that you might put in it. It has two interior compartments each with their own flap closure. And then inside we have six pockets in each compartment. It's really roomy. I can fit a lot of stuff in there. It's basically like two bags in one. And then on the other side, Awesome. I'm so excited to use this. I'm going to load it up next. I want to say thank you for sewing with me. I am so glad that we could take on a big project like this. I just, you know, this wave of inspira inspiration struck me. I was in the car. Um, luckily, I was in a parking lot and I had a sketchbook there and I just sketched out this design and I knew I had to make it and share it with you all. I hope you have a lot of success with it. Um, 
Feel free to modify it any way you like. That's the beauty of knowing how to sew, um, especially those interior pockets. You could really customize that to suit your needs perfectly. I would be so grateful if you would post a picture of your finished commuter totes and tag at SoSpire on Instagram or post direct to the SoSpire Facebook page. That would be really fabulous. I will be back soon with another inspired project. Until then, please know the creative genius in me salutes the creative genius in you. Take care.